our voice and exalt him this morning let's worship him Moses said ascribe greatness to our God the rock his word is perfect and all his ways are justice he is a God of faithfulness and without injustice good and upright is he let's worship him this morning from the depths of our heart he is the only definition of our God no one compares with him no man no general overseer no dictator I like you to magnify the king this morning magnify the Almighty the ancient of days the Holy One of Israel the only definition of our God and he's not just God he is our father our heavenly father magnify him this morning exalt him bless his name worship him ascribe greatness to the Lord God Almighty our heavenly father Lord we worship you you deserve our worship you deserve our worship you deserve our worship we magnify your name in all the earth none compares with you you are the only definition of our God no one compares to you it's all you oh God it's all about you it's all you it's all you it's all about you we honor you Jesus we honor your mighty God we honor you precious Holy Spirit it's all you it's all you thank you thank you thank you may your kingdom be established in our, in our praises, as, as your people, people we declare the mighty word, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is
like to share with us what I've given the title in Christ's image in Christ's image and I'd like to start immediately by asking the question who is Christ to every hair here present and everyone connected on live streaming who to you is Jesus Christ Amongst all things, the scriptures and the Holy Spirit brings to our understanding that Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, is the Son of God. And various people give credence to that truth. You see Mark chapter 1 from verse 1, the author of the book of Mark introduces that book by bringing to attention, I'd like to read that quickly, Mark chapter 1 and verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then you go on when the mother of Jesus was told about this supernatural conception that she was about to experience as a virgin, though betrothed or engaged to a man to whom she was about to be married. The Bible makes us to understand the angel gave her that visitation in Luke chapter 1 and verse 35 and testified that the Holy Spirit signifies that this thing you are going to conceive of the Holy Spirit shall be called the Son of God. You find that in Luke chapter 1 and verse 35. And not just the author, Mark, John Mark, and then also an angel from the presence of God testifying. You also see in Mark chapter 3, when you read from verse 11 to verse 12, how that even demons, unclean spirits, as Jesus was driving them out of people who are possessed, the root of infirmities for some, the root of um, diseases for some, as he was driving out those evil spirits, Mark chapter 3 from verse 11 to verse 12, he said these unclean spirits started to testify, we know who you are, you are the son of God. And Jesus muted them and told them not to testify. And so not just the demons, not just the angel, not just the author of one of the books of the gospels, you also find here in Mark chapter um, Mark chapter 15 from verse 37 to verse 38 at the crucifixion of Jesus and as he died and gave up the ghost or gave up the spirit the Bible says in that same moment the veil to the temple that separated the inner court or the temple from the most holy place the veil was split in two from top to bottom and one of those Roman soldiers who was involved in beating him involved in crucifying him even his persecutor, the one who, one of the ones involved in beating him up black and blue, when he saw this spectacle and the glory of the heavens breaking upon the earth, even the Roman centurion testified, surely this is the son of God. And then you see also in Matthew chapter 3, and read from verse 16 to verse 17, our heavenly father himself at the baptism of Jesus at the rivers of Jordan, being baptized by John the Baptist, the Holy Spirit came upon him and rested and remained upon him. And then God the Father testified from heaven, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the one baptizing also, John the Baptist, testified, and this is what John the Baptist had to say about Jesus. John chapter 1 from verse 32 to verse 34. And John bore witness or testified saying, I saw the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, descending from heaven like a dove. And he remained on him, that is on Jesus. I did not know him. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit, the Holy Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same, I mean, this is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So these scripture passages by the Father, by Jesus himself, by the Holy Spirit, by demons, by angels of God, by one of the authors of the books of the Bible, various quarters in various places, in various people testifying to the sonship of Jesus as the Son of God. And so if you are going to have a walk with Jesus, if you are going to represent Jesus on the earth, if you are going to receive Jesus Christ into your life, you must recognize him as the Son of God. And not just the Son of God, Jesus himself testified by himself 
He said, listen to me, I am the way. John chapter 14 and verse 6. I am the truth. I am the life. No man gets to the Father but by me. It, meaning, don't just see me as the Son of God. You can also become sons in your own right. You can also become daughters in your own right. But the access route, the pathway to the Father is through me. And so you'll see in that tabernacle of Moses after the perimeter fencing with the linen and fabrics of various colors symbolizing various things. Not for today. When you come to the first altar there made of bronze, the bronze altar, you will see at that point the sacrifices were made by the priest and the, the Levites provided the materials and then they offered the animals for sacrifice. They shed the blood, they sprinkled the blood round about the bronze altar symbolizing Jesus as our sacrifice symbolizing the cross as the place of our sacrifice symbolizing the blood that gives us access to the father that was shed all those things all the items in the tabernacle represent various dimensions of jesus and what jesus did for the believer so he's saying for you to journey from the place of the cross for you to journey from the beginning of the tabernacle into the most holy place where you find the father he says i am the way outer court I am the truth, inner court. I am the life, the most holy place. No man gets in there except by me. So Jesus is simply saying, you can become a son just as I am. You can become the things I became. You can do the things I do. But if you are going to come into that dimension, you need to receive me as the way. You need to receive me as the guiding principles, the truth that must keep you on the way, that leads you to the life, the life of God, the zoe of God that we experience in the very presence of God. So who is Jesus the Christ? The way, the truth, and the life. And having said that, when we now come to embrace him in our lives as the son of God, and so many other things I'd like to deal with, but i leave some of those things to the second service. We embrace Jesus as the Son of God. We embrace Jesus as the one who is able to guide us and keep us in the way and bring us to the life we can enjoy in the very presence of God. There is a response required of us. You want to become a child of God. You want to become a son of God. You want to become a daughter of God. You want to have a relationship with the Father like Jesus had a relationship. He taught us in prayer. He said, listen to me. You, this is the manner in which you pray. Our Father. He didn't say call on him as God. Yes, he is God. He's the creator of all things. But for you, if you are going to enjoy the benefits of access, the benefits of answers, you must learn to relate to him as the Father. And no man gets to the Father except by the way, the truth, and the life. So I challenge every one of us in here, don't just marvel at these things and be impressed. Jesus shares his expressions with us. He brings the dimensions of himself to us that there may be corresponding action. There are things required of anyone who wants to walk in the way, who wants to embrace the truth on the way that will lead him to the life. There, is, there are things required of everyone who wants to come into a relationship where God is not just creator, almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, where he becomes our father. He wants us to become his sons and daughters. But you see, there are responses required of us, and that's what I want to begin to address here this morning. One main requirement as we receive Jesus as son, as we receive Jesus as the way, as we receive not a way but the way, as we receive Jesus as the truth, as we receive Jesus as the life, one response required of us to enjoy the privileges, the expressions, the dimensions in Jesus. You can enjoy everything in Jesus as a teenager, as a housewife, a business person, a trader, captain of industry, politician, marine guru, you are into marine business, you are into uh, uh, government policy making, you are a researcher, you want to become a researcher, you want to become a leader of note. In all those dimensions of our lives, Jesus can bring to you a divine expression, the divine nature. But you see, there must be responses out of our lives if we are going to enjoy the expressions of Jesus he brings to us as the son of God, as the way, the truth, and the life. And one ex expression, one response required of us is that we take up the image of Christ. 
to take up the image of Christ also means to put on his image. And to explain that, I'd like to take us into the scenario of maybe you call it Bollywood or you call it Nollywood or you call it Hollywood, the people who act. You need to imagine for a moment this morning, I did a little bit of study and I saw the efforts, the prizes, the extreme measures, actors put in, actresses apply in order to be able to take up or put on the and the function of the they represent in the films they are. I was reading about some of these um, uh, notable actors and actresses, and I saw that some of them, to be able to take up the form of the personality they want to act, so that they take up prominent roles and in some of, the, some of these things they act, has pushed them up to some recognition. They receive academy awards, they receive international fame, they receive international recognition. Some of them have to go for one year to learn, to understudy, to check the mannerism, normal life, exceptional life, public life, private life. Some of them have to shed weight. I've seen some of these actors, read about them, in shedding up to 30 pounds. 30 pounds is somewhere around 12, 14 kilograms. Some of them have had to add up to 30 pounds to be able to take up the form, take up the role, take up the mannerism. Some of them have had to do body piercing nipple piercing some of them had to do tattoos not the makeup tattoo but the actual blood shedding tattoo and some of them have had to live in very unbearable conditions some of them after they've acted those roles in the films it takes them sometimes six months one year to be able to recover their original personality in trying to put on the role of an, a, a role in a film, a role in, uh, uh, I mean, in a script. You see that these people, I read about, um, um, is it Jamie Foxx now? Jamie Foxx took up the role of Ray Charles, a legendary but blind um, musician, keyboardist. And to be able to do that, he took on prosthetics. I think this is one of these medical gadgets, put it on his eyes so that you'll be able to act blind and for 24 hours of a day, he will have this thing sealing his eyes for 14 hours in one day. To be able to take up the mannerism, the language, the body language of a blind man who wants to act his role in a film, it brought him panic attacks. I mean, you need to understand, pan he was almost losing his mind because he had to subject himself to such extreme measures. I read about uh, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio in trying to act a role, I've uh, forgotten the name of the film now, he had to subject himself to arctic conditions where all year round you have snow and he had to get underwater in the sn um, snow water he had to live under in that for a while he had to live in very harsh and extreme conditions that subjected his health to jeopardy some of these people subject themselves to some measures they take up former navy seals these are very high level military officials in the united states and armed forces and the things they could have easily gotten professionals to be stunts men stunts women on their behalf they subject themselves because they want to feel the pain the rigor the people who go through these things have to go through why to put on for a moment a role maybe for a two-hour film a role, maybe for a one-hour film. Now, as a Christian, you can't be a Christian without putting on Christ. No matter the church you attend, no matter the tongues you speak, you cannot be a Christian without putting on Jesus Christ. For them, they go for worldly recognition. For them, they go for momentary awards. For us, it is for life and for eternity. The things we do in time as a Christian, putting on Christ in this life as a Christian, are measures, are pedestals for determining our reward in eternity. If they are willing to subject themselves, some of them become almost crazy. Some of them become manic. Some of them, I mean, like I mentioned about Jamie Foxx, he suffered panic attacks for maybe a 90-minute film. 
Your Christianity is not just, is not for Sunday service. Your Christianity is not for the religious days and maybe one and a half hours on Sunday, maybe another two hours in midweek, maybe one hour prayer meeting. Christianity is for a lifetime. Christianity is for your private life and public life. You must be a Christian even when you use the restroom. You must be a Christian even when you are in your bed. You must be a Christian when you are in public space. You must be a Christian when nobody sees you. A Christian is the one who puts on Christ for life. It is religion when you put on Christ for a moment. And so if these people are willing to do these things for human recognition, for transient rewards, for human awards, what are you willing to do for eternal rewards? This morning we are addressing in Christ's image, putting on the image of the Son of God, putting on the image of the one who offered himself as the way, the truth, and the life. Let's see some scriptures as we get on here this morning. Colossians Colossians chapter 3, a long one, and probably I will just try to round off things here. So this Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1, are you there? And so I read, from verse 1. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If then you raised up with Christ, seek those things which are above, above the systems of this world, above in a heavenly dimension, seek those, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, I mean, on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are died, I mean, for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death. The King James says, mortify. You do it. Christ will not do that for you. Every one of us, we have a function in responding to this demand of the Son of God. In responding to putting on Christ Jesus. Look at it here. It says in verse 5, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. In what things? In which areas? Fornication. I will not be explaining that here because of time. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Passion. Or carnal drive. Carnal desires. Passion. It says evil desire. Covetousness, that is monetary and materialis materialism. It says here, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourselves and I myself once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off. You see, we are talking about putting on Christ. And if you are going to fully put on Christ and his essence, his nature, his character, his power will not be neutralized in your life, there are things we have to put off consequently. Look at this here. He said, um, excuse me, that's what's verse. I'm mixing up the verses now. Can someone help me here? Thank you. Verse 8. But now you yourselves are to put off all these things. Anger wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. Some of us, because we want to belong, we want to say what they say. He said, don't join alliances with them. Don't form a confederacy with them. Isaiah chapter 8, when you read from verse 10, verse 11, he said, let the Lord be your fear and your dread. Don't use the language they use if it violates the Christ you put on. Verse 9, do not lie to one another, not to make extra money, not to form, not to appear white when you are really navy blue. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off, you have done what? 
Hello, friends, you have done what? You have done what? Listen, whether you are a student, teenager, businessman, you've made it or you are trying to make it, there is a demand on us here if we have really embraced Jesus and Jesus is Lord over us, if we have really put on Christ, he said here again, he said, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, verse 10, and have put on. To put on is to wear like a garment. To put on is to be robed like the way we put on an apparel, a robe. He said here, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him, that is Christ, who created him. Where there is, I mean, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on, look at it, in that passage you see putting on up to three, four times, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. Christians who struggle, I was told by my wife this morning how someone said, for what you did, I will never forgive you. And the person is supposed to be a Christian. That is, though confessing Jesus, but by manner of life, by conduct, by confession, putting off Christ. Christ is the essence of forgiveness. Life in Christ is the epitome of forgiveness. The ability to come into Christ and put on Christ is a symbolism and expression that we have been forgiven, that we also may be able to forgive. And so here he says in verse um, um, 13 again, he says, bearing one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Verse 14, as I close here this morning, but above all these things, put on, look at another one there, put on love. Not the love a man has for his wife, not the love a man has for money, not the love a woman has for jewelry, not the love a married woman has for August clothing, not the love a man has for a brand new Jeep, sports utility vehicle, no, sir. Cross store, cross, I mean, utility vehicle, no, sir, no, man. But the God kind, the sacrificial, selfless type of love. Verse 14 again, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond or the seal of perfection. I need to close here this morning. So we are challenging us. As a Christian, we put on Christ. We put on the image of Christ. And these are the forces that can neutralize. Though we speak in tongues, they neutralize. Though we go to church, they can neutralize. Though we carry Bibles, they can neutralize. We speak for us as Christians, but our manner of life does not measure up. Why? Because though we are supposed to have put on Christ, we are trying to put on alongside the old man of the flesh. He said, the, as for the old man, mortify, put to death, that you might be able to put on Christ. And you see, to do this is naturally impossible. Some people call it impossicant. That is impossible and cannot. Naturally impossible for me to forgive 24 hours a day. Naturally impossible for me not to be angry 24 hours a day. Naturally impossible for me not to hold malice, bear grudges. For me, your pastor, naturally impossible. But then you see, even God knew that the demands of putting on Christ are not going to be naturally possible. So he gave us the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is called the helper, the comforter. He said, I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you as orphans. I, almighty, full of life, full of mercy, full of forgiveness, I will come to you. And so I'm saying to you here, in case you've been struggling with one walk of the flesh or the other, you've been struggling with the old man of the flesh for so long, we're saying you don't need to struggle. There is help. God has provided help. God has never left us to be, to live as orphans. An orphan is a fatherless person 
but we are able to say, our Father in heaven, help us. And so I close by challenging us to this this morning. You cannot continue to live life confusing people around you. They see you go to church, but they see you live like them. You cannot afford to continue to confuse even the church, even angels, even spiritual leaders. Because we see you like one of us, but in our decision-making process, the life we live beyond the gates of Zion, the things we do, the things that influence our choices, it is like people who have never known the Lord, who have never met the Lord. We are saying, put on Christ. If actors who will be paid some dollars, who will be paid some naira, who will be recognized for a while and they will be forgotten the next moment, if they are willing to go to such extreme measures, extreme pain, psychological pain, emotional pain, financial pain, physical pain, to take up a role of a complete stranger. Here we are talking about the Son of God. Here we are talking about your Savior. Here we are talking about the one who forgives our sins. If you will be a Christian, take up, put on, like a robe in your mind, in your deeds, in your lifestyle, put on Christ. So that in your mind, in public space, amongst the unsaved, amongst the saints, we all can testify that indeed this person is a Christian. Being a Christian is not just being anointed and being able to chase away demons. Being anointed is not just being able to pray endlessly in tongues and your prayers are eagerly responded to. Being a Christian also means putting on, taking off. And we are not acting, we are living. In Nollywood, in Bollywood, in Hollywood, they act, they go back to the original. Here we live the life as a precursor to eternal life. Hallelujah. Shall we take a bow this morning? I'd like you to look at your life irrespective of who you are and what you do for a living. Is Christ found in you? Is Christ living himself and expressing himself through you? Are you receiving help from the Holy Spirit to live the supernatural life? The supernatural life is not just miracles, raising the dead, casting out demons. The supernatural life is also being able to manifest the character, the nature, the forgiveness, the mercy, the love, the joy, the peace of Christ that passes human understanding. It's a supernatural life. When we're able to put on Christ in deed and in truth. I'd like you to look at your life this morning and be sincere with yourself. God loves sincere people. Even when such people are sincerely wrong. God loves sincere people. Can you be sincere enough this morning to admit where you fall short? To recognize where indeed it could be in your marriage, it could be in your relations in the office, it could be the way you conduct yourself in the market, in the taxi, on the road, in the midst of strangers, and then you are glad nobody knows you're a Christian here. Because even you yourself, you know you will fail yourself the way you conducted yourself in that space. Let's ask for the mercy of God this morning. Let's pray that indeed, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to put on Christ. To put on Christ Jesus. The measure of my life is how much of you I carry. The impact of my life is how much of you people see. I love you. At all times, in the fullness and glory. The measure of my life is how much of Jesus I carry, I put on. The impact of my life is how much of you people see. Not the speaking in tongues or invoking Jesus like, like a chant, but in mercy, in forgiveness, in love, in charity. In peace with all men. Goodwill towards all men. 
Father, we thank you this morning. What a privilege for a lifetime to be able to put on Christ. To carry the image of your son, your beloved son, your only begotten son. I thank you, Father, this morning that you are calling us out of the frailties and weaknesses of the flesh in the fields of our endeavors, in the fields of our lives, that we all may take on Christ and put on Christ and go back into those same fields and be a witness of your resurrection and your resurrection power in our lives. Lord, I pray for people here present. Give us the grace, the enabling of the Holy Spirit that on a daily basis, for a lifetime and for eternity, we are able to put on Jesus Christ. Thank you for answers. We give you praise. Break yokes, ancient habits, genetic, generational family patterns that neutralize the blood of Jesus, that neutralize the finished works of the cross, that neutralize the help of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We break those chains, we destroy those yokes. We receive a fresh baptism that the Holy Spirit brings to those who put on Christ. Thank you, Father, because we are praying in Jesus' name. Before I step down this morning, is someone here saying, please pray for me? I don't just want religion. I want the real thing. I want Jesus. I want him to come to live in me that I may also be able to intentionally put him on in every sphere of my life. Is someone here saying, I want to take a decision for Jesus. I want to be born again. I want Jesus to come into my life. I want him to come and live in me that I might also be able to put him on in every area of my life. If you are such a person in this gathering, lift up your right hand as a sign of surrender. We'll pray for you and your life will never be the same. The supernatural will take the place of the weaknesses of the natural. Any sort of person in this gathering, Lift up your right hand as a sign of surrender wherever you are. We we'll pray for you and your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want us to stretch forth your hands towards our pastor and just pray for the refreshing of the Holy Spirit for God's servant this morning. Let's pray for a replenishment of uh, grace replenishment of anointing uh, oh yes the presence the refreshing of the presence of god we energize our pastor afresh god will take him from strength to strength from glory to glory even by the spirit of the lord in the mighty name of jesus in jesus name we pray amen let's celebrate the lord jesus this morning yeah an awesome time awesome word hallelujah Please, we would like to honor God this morning with our uh, tithes and offerings. We want to just honor the Lord with our giving. So if you have your envelope with you, but was, we really, in these times, we encourage uh, electronic transfer in your giving. We want to give, you can make transfer to the account that will be uh, shown to you on the screen. Um, please, but if you have the physical cash, you can also go ahead as the ushers help us this morning. Just pray that as many that will be given this morning, that God will remember you for good in the name of Jesus. It will cause his glory to be revealed in your life and your finances in the name of the Lord Jesus. We come again, the virus and the lives of God's people. The virus will not destroy the fruit of our gums in the mighty name of Jesus. The virus will not destroy your health. It will not destroy your finances. The virus will not destroy your home. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for as many who have desired also to give or are not able. That the almighty God. That this week as we step into a new week. It will, it will bring favorable opportunities your way. In the name of Jesus. That when next you come before the presence of the Lord. You will not come empty. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you Father. For in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Please let's listen, uh, listen to the following announcement. This Wednesday we're coming together, I mean, uh, online, we're joining our discovery service, a teaching service, and time is 6 p.m. Uh, on Saturday also we'll be having our prevailers place. It's a time we come together to pray. Prayer, at this time we're still having virtual meetings via Zoom. 
If you want to check the details on, on how to be a part of the prayer meeting, please, you can uh, check any of our WhatsApp group uh, portals, platforms in the church, women's group, uh, the Enoch Generation, IHHP Workforce, Leaders Group. You will see the details on how to be a part of the meeting. And as you do so, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we done? Hallelujah. Uh, one more thing before I step down, before I invite our pastor to close this meeting. Please, if you, ha if you happen to be worshiping with us for the very first time on a Sunday morning, uh, this Kingdom Life service, you've been to church maybe in the past, uh, special program, but this is your very first time of worshiping with us on a very, f I mean, uh, on a Sunday morning like this, please could you just wave back at me wherever you see them. First time you're worshiping with us, please let's put the hands together, celebrate our sister. Any other person? You're worshiping with us for the very first time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more, please, can you be on your feet? Our sister would like to see you. Can you put the hands together for them, celebrate these wonderful people? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. God bless you. You may have your seat. This is the International House of His Presence. And by the special grace of God, God has given us a mandate through His servant to make his presence known and felt throughout the earth using every godly means. And that's what we're running with in this church. We have our services like the one you're partaking of this morning, the Kingdom Life Service. We have two services in this season. The first service uh, commences from uh, 8.30 in the morning to 9.45, and the second service starts from 10 a.m. to 11.15. 11, uh, 11, uh, Praise the Lord. Then our discovery service, our teaching service is on Wednesday. And presently, we're still... Uh, viewing online, doing meeting in the cloud, so you can connect with us via His Presence NG on YouTube, His Presence NG on Facebook, and also through our website, www.houseofhispresence.org. Uh, so you can connect with those, I mean, connect with us through those channels. Then Saturdays, we come to pray. We gather even on the cloud through Zoom, uh, through Zoom platform to also pray. And uh, I want to let you know that your coming today is not just by chance. There's a reason for your coming, and I pray that what God has in store for you will not elude you in the name of Jesus. God will bless you. He will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And God will also answer you when you call on him, and he will also answer all your prayers. As you have stepped in here today, the presence of God will make the difference in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. One more thing, immediately after service at the rear, uh, rear uh, part of the hall, just by the right-hand corner, the rear... Uh, uh, towards the exit point. We have a special team called the reinforcement team. They would like to minister to you immediately after services. Please don't be in a haste to go. They would like to share one or two things with you. Get your details and also uh, inform you and uh, give you details about this, our ministry and how you can be a part of this assembly. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together as we make welcome our pastor to close this meeting. Praise the Lord. Uh, I hope you have been blessed in this morning's service. We would like, like to challenge us. Let's not just be hearers of these things. Let's be doers. The Bible says in James chapter 1 from verse 23 to verse 25, it said, not the hearers, the summary of that passage is that not just the hearers, but the doers who are blessed. So I'd like to challenge us. Let's be doers of God's word. As long as you are taught things that have basis in scripture, they are not just sentiments, they're not just psychology or the vain philosophies of men or the traditions of men. If they're truths with basis in scripture, founded in scripture, with the witness of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, then the next thing is corresponding action. Make up your mind to put on Christ, not for one hour service, two hour service, uh, one hour prayer meeting, but for life, so that we may receive eternal rewards. Shall we rise to our feet to close the service? Um, one of our men um, was bereaved of his mom. I think uh, it's going to two weeks now. Uh, in the person of um, Brother Victor Ifejika. Brother Victor Ifejika um, is a member of the church, but I think the wife is more prominent, Sister Sandra Ifejika. So um, he was bereaved of his mom. Um, I think today, tomorrow makes two weeks, but we just heard about that in the last three two, three days. Um, so we'd like us to reach out to him. Let's encourage him and the family and um, stand with them at this time. The mom was quite mature. She passed on at the age of 83.
But you know, even if our parents live up to 150, we will still, it's for us on this side, it's still a loss and we'll miss them. So I really like us to reach out to him and his family and encourage them. Let me turn to someone close to you. You don't have to touch, you don't have to even elbow. Just look at the person and say, put on Christ for life. Not just for one hour service. Even when they don't know that you're a Christian. Put on Christ. Businessman. Politician. Student. Put on Christ. Hallelujah. Shall we invoke the benediction together from Hebrews chapter 13, from verse 20 to verse 21. One, two, go. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make me complete in every good work to do his will walking in me what is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen god bless you god keep you cause his face to shine upon you cause the light of his countenance to be upon you continually and grant you peace on every side in jesus name Amen.